You might have heard of phrases like blue team or red team or even purple team in cybersecurity, but do you know what they actually mean? In this video, I'll run through what all these teams are and their responsibilities, and I'll also tell you exactly why you need to start your cybersecurity career in the blue team. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Jono, and at the time of this video, I have about two years of cybersecurity experience under my belt as a security analyst. So hopefully at the end of this video, you'll walk away with the understanding of why blue team is the way to go to start your career in cybersecurity. Blue team is just a simple way of saying you're on the defending team. That means you're working in a standard security operations center, or SOC for short. Most of the time, you'll hear a lot of people say SOC analyst, sometimes I say security analyst, but they represent the same thing. The role of a SOC analyst is mainly to monitor and respond to security incidents. For example, a standard process of monitoring could be going through your company's ticketing system and work through any security related incidents. So stuff like password compromises, phishing email reports, and so on. A SOC analyst is usually required to know or at least understand the different systems that are involved in a company's security architecture, like how a firewall works, and how web security, email security, and endpoint security all gel together. It's important to know all these so you can conduct risk assessments and vulnerability management, which leads to another role called vulnerability analyst. They're in charge of finding and remediating vulnerabilities on endpoints. Vulnerabilities are called CVEs, which stands for Common Vulnerabilities and Exposures, and they are often denoted as CVE, followed by the year and the number. An example CVE could be CVE 2021-44228, which is famously known as the log 4 shell vulnerability that allowed threat actors to remotely execute Java classes in LDAP servers. So the job of the vulnerability analyst in this example would be to conduct a scan on the company's endpoint solution like CrowdStrike to find any computers with this vulnerability and remediate it by removing it or updating the file. There is also the GRC side of the SOC analyst which is governance, risk and compliance. They are more focused on making sure that the company meets the standards for the security controls and in compliance with policies and regulations. A SOC analyst can also be involved in in some of the development work which can be creating automations that reduces the amount of manual work. Some examples would be creating a dashboard which consolidates all the events of a user so we can easily investigate a user. There's also stuff like creating playbooks which allows the team to take actions on any incidents that have been detected in the system, so like blocking a suspicious IP address on the firewall. The main goal of all of these responsibilities is to protect the company's infrastructure and data against the bad people. And if you want to see what the day in life of a SOC analyst in a blue team looks like, then check out this video in the pop-up or the video down in the description. So that was the rough description of blue team. Now what about the red team? Red team is often known as the offensive team and they are the most common in movies and TV shows. You've probably seen some show with a hacker just pressing random buttons and they have successfully hacked into the mainframe or something cringe. <clears throat> When you're on the red team, your role will be called a penetration tester or pen tester. The main purpose of this role is in the name, which is to penetrate an organization's security systems to conduct tests and find gaps. And this kind of testing process is not random. They need to outline the objective of this test, set the scope and the rules of engagement like what kind of tools and techniques will be used. Then the team will conduct some reconnaissance work which involves information gathering like using OSINT for example. Once all the activity has been completed, they need to do a vulnerability analysis to create a report for the company. This report will pinpoint all the gaps that the company has in their security systems and provide recommendations so the blue team can reinforce them. Now that's great team in a nutshell. But there's one more team that's not as common, which is the purple team. If you haven't guessed it already, if you combine red and blue colors, you get purple. And that is essentially what the purple team is. It's a combination of both the expertise from the blue team and the red team. Usually the red team and the blue team work in isolation. So that means a lot of times blue team doesn't even know what's happening over on the red team and what kind of tests they are conducting. This is where the purple team comes in and they can bridge the communication gap. This is especially useful to improve awareness and also better learning opportunities since members from both teams can switch over during the engagement. One of the main reasons why purple team is not as common in organizations is because it depends on the use case. For example, a company might find it more practical and realistic to keep both the red team and the blue team separate so the pen testing scenario is more real. But on the other hand, some companies might prefer to have a proper team as they might be able to find more issues through better collaboration and communication 
which might be missed if the teams worked in isolation. Okay, now let's talk about why I think everyone that starts in cybersecurity needs to start in the blue team. The first and most important reason is because you need to build your fundamental knowledge first. In a blue team, you have the opportunity to learn all the security systems, how they all work together, and how the internal monitoring process works. It's also easier for beginners as it requires less technical knowledge and a lower barrier of entry. I know there are exceptions to people studying their cybersecurity career in the red team, but for the general population, I don't recommend it. You'll get easily overwhelmed by the amount of technical skills required and the understanding of systems and their architecture. Besides, when you're in the red team, you need to be very aware of what systems you're pen testing and the rules and how it all works. So this is definitely not beginner level and it'll give you a hard time. You also need technical skills because some of the tests you'll be doing is stuff like Linux commands, scripts and programs. So keep that in mind. Another point I need to raise that I don't see a lot of people talk about is confrontations from clients. When a client hires a red team to perform these tests, they don't really care about your techniques or the tools that you use. They care about the report that you give them. From a client's perspective, they need a well drawn out report of all the vulnerabilities found and an actionable plan that they can take. If your test doesn't have any findings or any meaningful results, you need to be able to explain yourself and defend your report. Clients want their bang for the buck. So red team needs to stand their ground in a confrontation and communicate these things when there's not a lot of results. This is kind of similar to blue team as well. Upper management have the tendency to want to see vulnerabilities for some reason. They get all suspicious when there's little to no incidents and they question if we're doing our job properly. They really need to understand that sometimes it's a good thing to not have any findings because everything is covered. Because that's what we're paid to do. Anyway, hopefully you guys are convinced that studying in the blue team is a much better choice for your early cybersecurity career. And for those that are interested in learning how the blue team defends against threat actors, then check out this video. As always, feel free to comment down below for any thoughts and videos you want me to make. Thanks for watching. Bye.